Hello, here's a demo video on how to make a tripod mug. And they kind of look like this. They have these three little feet, but the cool thing is they are made out of just one slab. So you don't have to cut a separate slab for the bottom. So like all of these cups, we're starting with a slab off of the slab roller. And after you take it off the slab roller, you're going to want to smooth it out. You want to get rid of that texture that the slab roller leaves. And I'm going to take a sponge, a damp sponge, and I'm kind of doing a little compression here. So I'm compressing the clay um, in the slab so that those old clay molecules are compressed, which makes a, a really nice strong slab, which in turn makes a really good strong mug. So I've done a lot of this before I started this video. So um, again, a strong slab. Um, I'm going to make roll out my slab and make sure that the width of it is about a quarter of an inch or less. So if I take a ruler, quarter of an inch, line it up this way, it's a little less than a quarter of an inch. And the reason why the width is so important is because we're making a mug, we're making something that somebody is going to hold, you don't want it to be too heavy. So about a quarter of an inch or less is going to do it. Um, all right, so you're gonna decide on a template. So it's just gonna be a rectangle template. It could be smaller. So think about, you know, the height. This mug was made from this template. It's a little, it's a, it's, it's a big, it's a big mug. So again, if you want something a little bit taller, you're gonna make your template taller. For this demo, I'm gonna make something a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna put my template down. I'm going to cut out my slab. I'm going to save this for my handle later on. And um, I'm also going to need some clay to fill in some areas in a bit. All right, so I've got my slab. I'm going to even it out. And what I'm going to do is cut beveled edges. So right now, the ends are at a 90 degree angle. So what I'm going to do is take a Fetley knife and I'm going to turn my Fetley knife to 45 degrees this way, so to the right. And that's 45-ish degrees. And you'll see why we're beveling our edge in just a second. So I've got 45 degrees here, and I've got 45 degrees on the other end. Now those angles that we're making have to be parallel. So we're not gonna take this and then do 45 degrees um, this way. We want it to be parallel, so I'm going to move this over here. And I've got my beveled ends. All right. So now at this point, I'm going to take those beveled ends and I'm going to score them. And I'm going to slip. Make sure those ends are really nice and scored because this is a major join in this piece. So you'll see why we made those ends bevel. They have a really nice fit. If we didn't have a bevel and they were just at 90 degrees when we would wrap them around, they would just kind of like mush together. So we want a nice seam like that. So speaking of, if you want to play along, again, it depends on the design of your mug, um, but if you wanted to kind of uh, make that seam into a design element, I've had students make mugs where they've wrapped it around and went a little bit past where it meets and you know slipped and scored it there. You can see that this student, if you take a really close look, made it look like it was um, held together by buttons. I've had students make it look like it was held together by nails or um, staples or something like that. So even if you wanted to play, this girl made um, her whole entire mug look like a sweater. You can see this design that she incised on the slab and these are little buttons that she made. So that's just kind of a design element. Again, just depends on what your drawings, what your initial drawings and plans um, look like. I guess. 
All right, so now I'm going to weld or smooth out this seam right here on the outside. And on the inside, it's a little bit taller, so I'm going to take this and cut it. All right, now I'm going to take my, um, my wooden thing tool, your wooden tool, and the round end makes for a really good seam smoother. So you can see in there, it does leave kind of a little bit of a texture, but that'll all get smoothed out in the end. You can see that I'm supporting this with my non-smoothing hand. All right, now I'm going to just make a decision um, what is going to be the bottom of the cup and what's going to be the top of the cup. Um, this doesn't really matter at this point, but this is going to be the top of my cup, decision made. So what I'm going to do is start to thin out just the rim, and I'm just pinching it. So a thinner uh, rim or a thinner lip of your mug is comfortable to a user of the mug. Um, so again, keep that in mind as you're constructing this. You have to decide, you know, which is the top, which is the bottom, and then which part is going to hit somebody's mouth. You want that to be comfort. You don't want it to be um, a very harsh angle. You want it to be nice and round. All right, so I'm going to pinch that a little bit thinner. Okay, I'm going to flip this over. I've got my bottom right here. Now I'm going to go eye level with my mug right now, and it's, a, it's slanting up a little bit on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is kind of knock it down a little bit, just by tapping it. And that did it. Just those little taps. Tap, tap. All right, hands in an equilater equilateral triangle. And we're going to start to push and manipulate the end of it together. That's going to form our legs. All right, now before I get too far, I'm going to take my scoring tool and I'm going to score this because eventually these are going to come together. These are going to come together. Same these over here. Some good old slip. All right. And I'm going to start to really press this together to form those legs. And you can kind of see how it naturally, they naturally meet right there. There's going to be a little bit hole, a little bit of a hole right there. And there are two ways we can um, secure that area that's open. Wouldn't be a very good cup or a mug right now. All right, a couple different ways you can do this. You can take a hunk of clay. And you can make a little button. You can score it, score, score, score. You can slip it, and then you can just place it right over there. And then you'd have to smooth it in from the bottom, but you don't have to smooth it in there. So if you wanted, again, that could be a, an interesting de design element on the bottom of your mug. Um, you can just leave it like that. If you want it nice and smooth, I'm going to take a little button of clay. And you're going to make it into a triangle that you're going to fit in there. I'm going to score this. I'm going to score this. I'm going to slip it. And I'm just going to fit it right in that hole that I made. And then I'm going to weld it. I think this wooden tool has really become my preferred method of smoothing. Because I can get in areas that my chunky little fingers can't. All right, so if I flip it over, I've got a tripod. I've got a mug that stands up. All right, now we've got to deal with smoothing out the inside. If you look inside, 
you'll see that there are one, two, there's three areas where the legs are that need to be um, uh, filled in. Um, those little crevices, those little areas right there, that could trap food or uh, uh, drink particles. And um, again, design-wise, that's no bueno. So we want that nice and smooth on the inside. So I'm going to take like a little coil or a little bean of clay. It just kind of depends on um, the area. I'm going to slip it and score it. I've already scored it on the inside. You can see there's my little coil right there. I think for this one, I just use like little beans of clay. And now what I can do is focus and smooth the inside. All right. I'm going to do that two more times. And then I'm going to really work on getting the inside nice and smooth so that there aren't any crevices that, again, will hold uh, food or drink matter. And therefore, you know, in the future when somebody's using this, it's A, it's going to be hard to clean, and B, it could um, be a breeding ground for bacteria. All right. But I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to move on to the next step. Uh, maybe you want your mug to have a little belly. You want it to kind of flare out like this and then flare back in. So you're going to use your hands for that. Here's my supporting hand and here's my belly hand. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking this and carefully just flaring it out. Just that belly right there. see it's kind of wonky. All right. It's kind of puffed out a little bit. And then what I can do is maybe taper the top of this in a little bit better. And then maybe I want to kind of flute out the cup or the rim a little bit better. See it looks like a little um, it's like a little kettle or something. It shortens out. You don't have to put a belly on it. It could just be straight up and down. Again, it just depends on your drawings. It depends on your design. It depends on whatever plans you made previous to construction. Right. I need to take some time to smooth out all of these wrinkles and um, um, all of these little areas that need smoothing and that's part of the craftsmanship of making something that is handmade is making it nice and um, neat looking and well constructed um, so that's something that I'm going to work on next um, after I make a handle for it so there is a video called attaching handles and making handles um, but I'll make one real quick for this you're going to get a coil of clay and you're going to roll it into a carrot shape. So a carrot being fatter on one end. This is way too much clay. This is going to be my fat end. Okay, carroty. All right, and then I'm going to take a damp sponge. I'm going to hold the fat end with my non-dominant hand. I'm going to take a wet sponge and these two fingers and or my thumb, this finger, and this finger, and I'm going to move down you see how it stretched it out? It also stretched out my handle as well as compressed. So again, I'm putting pressure, pressure, pressure right here as I move down. And what happens is it compresses all the little clay molecule molecules, thus having a really nice strong handle. All right, so now I can kind of play with what I want my handle to look like. And do I want a fancy handle? Do I want a wide handle? 
Uh, do I want the handle to dip down and then back up? Again, part of your design, part of your drawings, part of your plans. And you can even use this. So the handle that I made is a little bit too big for this mug. So I'm going to pinch it off right there. All right. As soon as I get my handle form decided on, um, so again, it could be something like, like this. Here's a handle I already pulled, and it's leather hard. I'm going to take a bat. I'm going to spray the bat. I'm going to flip my cup upside down. And I'm going to store the handle that I just pulled alongside of this mug because we want them to get leather hard at the same rate. We want them to have the same moisture level. So I would um, wrap this in plastic and wait another day and um, they should be they should have the same exact moisture content so this is pretty plastic right now I can't attach this to this or else it's just gonna flop this is a mug that I did yesterday this is at a perfect um, stage where I can attach this and I can even sculpt this a little bit more if I wanted to so again slipping and scoring and attaching all right so um, Again, that's how you make a tripod mug. Boop.